Job chapter 1, verse number 20. After Job received four messages from four different messengers, his world was turned upside down in one afternoon. Verse 20, the Bible said, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. We thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies. We thank you for good fellowship with thy people. We thank you that we can be in this place tonight. Lord, we are a needy people. We are thankful for the word of God. We can revisit it time and time again and find your promises are true. Find that you are faithful. And God, we can find help in time of need. Now, Father, I pray for that one that may be struggling tonight. I pray for that one that is facing adversity tonight. I pray for that one that is in the valley tonight. I pray that you, you Lord, will speak to their hearts. You will strengthen their inner man. You will help them in their adversity. And God, I pray you'd get glory and honor. Certainly, God, save that one nearest tale. God, do a work around here tonight. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll bless you and praise you for it. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. I want you to uh, look at this tonight with me. As I mentioned, Job has received the most horrific news no one has ever suffered as much as Job suffered in this one day. And notice uh, what Job does upon receiving the news. Notice, first of all, his reaction. In verse number 20, it said, Then Job arose, rent his mantle, shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground. Can I say, that would be a normal reaction for you to lose it uh, when you got word uh, that all your flocks was taken, uh, that all uh, you possessed was taken, uh, and that your ten children uh, were taken. A uh, 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 friend, uh, uh, how you and I would respond, we would not know because we have never faced anything like that. Uh, but can I say it makes perfect sense. Uh, a normal reaction would be to rent your clothes, uh, to shave your head, uh, to fall down, uh, weak with uh, uh, hysteria, I can see all those things happening and all oh, that reaction is so real. We see his reaction. Now notice his remedy. When he gets the worst news he could get, what did Job do? He crawled up in the corner and sucked his thumb. Is that what he did? Uh, he uh, called uh, uh, the uh, horoscope hotline to see if his day would be better the next day. Is that what he did? Did he whine and complain to anybody that would listen? Is that what he... No, no. Look at the remedy for the worst news on the worst day that could ever be... Fall. I mean, in chapter uh, 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 2, he said, The day of my greatest fear had come upon me. Uh, the worst day of all days, what did Job do? It said in verse 20 that he fell down upon the ground and worshipped. You talk about some character. I've, 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 I've seen people get a runny nose and they'll stay out of church for three weeks. Job lost ten children. He hadn't even made funeral arrangements yet, but he fell down and worshipped. Can I say the remedy for whatever you will face is worship. No matter how bad the news, no matter how much pressure, no matter how dark the day, uh, if you can find yourself an altar and fall down upon it uh, and begin to worship God, uh, because regardless of how bad the day may be, uh, 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 you and I deserve to die and go to hell, and because of the blood of Christ, uh, we're not going to hell, uh, and He is worthy to be praised. Uh, yeah. We see his reaction, we see his remedy. Now notice his response. In verse 21, that song Brother James sings, 
Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, I've known a lot of people in my 56-plus uh, uh, years on this earth that uh, 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 something happens in their life and they blame God. I've heard a lot of people say that God took things from them. And Job said the Lord gave, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job said all that is God's business. Only thing I can control is my business, and my business is to bless him. Yep. And I got to thinking about that, where he said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. One other time we find that in Scripture. The Bible says in Psalms 113, verse number 1, Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Are you a servant of the Lord? Are you saved? Do you belong to him? Amen. Then you're commanded to praise him. Amen. Hmm? It says, praise the name of the Lord. Verse 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Yeah. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Amen. Can I say we are commanded to praise the Lord, we are commanded to bless his name, and Job did that very thing. He blessed the name of the Lord in the midst of his darkness. Can I say that word bless simply means to live in an act of adoration. When you say, blessed be the name of the Lord... If you truly mean it in your heart, your life will back up what you're saying and your life will be an, an actual act of adoration to God. When people look at your life, do they see you adoring God? Amen. To bless the Lord simply means not to utter it with your lips, but to live a life that pleases God because your adoration to Him. Now can I say the Lord is worthy of our adoration regardless of our circumstances. He is worthy of it because of His holiness. He is a holy God. There is nothing defiled about Him. There is nothing dark about Him. There is nothing evil about Him. He can't even be tempted with sin. He is so holy that you and I could even see Him while we're in these fleshly bodies uh, because it would consume us uh, because of the brightness of His glory. He is to be blessed and adored because He is holy. It amazes me we'll worship people because they can hit a baseball or because they can shoot a basketball, or because they can throw a football, or because they can swim faster than anybody else, uh, or run faster than anybody else, uh, or drive around in circles faster than anybody else, uh, or because they can act better than anybody else, uh, or because they have charisma, or because they have money and they have fame. Uh, we worship people like that, uh, and at the bottom and the root of it all, uh, they're just sinners like we are. Uh, uh, but can I say, uh, uh, the one who is altogether lovely, he deserves to be adored and yet even in a church setting among church people there are some who will not utter praise to his name can I say he deserves to be adored because he's holy he deserves to be adored because of his handiwork there's nothing you have ever seen that he didn't make he made it all. Every sunset you've seen a picture of, God made it. Every coastline with the gentle waves uh, brushing up against it, God made it. Uh, every waterfall, uh, every rainbow, uh, every valley, uh, every mountaintop, uh, everything that is beautiful, uh, God made it all. And he is worthy to be adored from it. We'll adore painters because they can paint a scene. Well, God didn't need to paint one. He made it. Amen. Yeah. Mm. All they're doing is trying to capture what God's already done. They can't do it. Amen. Uh, we, uh, 
uh, uh, herald uh, uh, writers and authors and poets uh, because of their use of language and words. Uh, but God pinned down a book uh, uh, that'll change a soul, my dear friends. Uh, because of his handiwork, he deserves to be adored. Because of his holiness, because of his heart. This holy God that made everything is not a tyrant. He has a heart. He loves sinners. He deserves to be adored because he loves sinners. The most vilest, he still loves them. Oh, we ought to adore him. Can I say this? Uh, he deserves to be adored because of his heart for his sheep. Oh, only a wonderful Savior uh, who saves a sinner from his sin uh, uh, that has a heart towards his sheep uh, uh, will leave the 99 and go after a lost one. Uh, only he'll do that because he has a heart for his sheep. He has a heart for sinners. He has a heart for those that suffer. He has a heart for those that are sick. Uh, he has a heart for those that are struggling. Uh, he deserves to be adored because of his personification of who he is. I thought about all those things. But I got to thinking about our text. Job lost his flocks, his finances, and his family. After the first wave, then he lost his flesh. Again, I've seen people that somebody didn't shake their hand and they quit church. I've seen people that had a loved one pass away and they won't darken the doors of a church. We've had somebody that quit coming because they didn't put a name up there on that banner. That is true. Hit me at the back door and asked why their name wasn't up there. I said, that's reserved for people that dedicated themselves to the ministry of Emmanuel Baptist Church that went above and beyond just coming to church. They said, you're not going to put their name up there? Nope. I said, I won't be back. See ya. Because if that's what you're coming to worship, you've missed the mark. That banner is more important. Amen. Huh? I've seen people get upset because the preacher didn't recognize their children. Quit coming to church. I've seen people quit coming to church because the preacher had the audacity to preach on their sin. I've seen a child get a runny nose knock the whole family out for a month. Hmm. You say, what are you trying to say? I've seen people quit with nothing affecting them. Job had his whole world turned upside down. As I was thinking about that, this is what I want to preach on. How could Job bless the Lord? What did he have that caused him to bless the Lord? Knowing he's going to bury ten children. And by the way, Brother Tommy... Job wasn't indwelled by the Holy Ghost of God like we are. Job didn't have a, a copy of the Bible like we do. Job didn't have that verse where God's faithful and true. Job didn't have that verse where he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. And God did, didn't reveal to Job all those things. And another thing, Brother Donald, go, go study it out. God didn't give Job any warning. Job wasn't sitting in church on Sunday and heard a message, uh, 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 hey, something evil may befall you, just keep seeking God. He didn't get that. Matter of fact, God didn't speak to him through any of this. Until you get down to the end of the book. How could Job bless the Lord? I mean, we sit here tonight... You're wearing nice clothes. You live in a nice place. You drive a nice vehicle. Many of you got nice jobs. Got a little change in your pocket. The kids aren't sick. The grandkids aren't sick. Uh, 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 the bills are paid. Uh, everything's going good. Uh, 
And some of you didn't bless the Lord. How could Job bless the Lord? Well, I'm going to tell you. Can I say, first of all, he could bless the Lord because of his stand. Look at verse number 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright. Can I say that if you don't bless God when you're on the mountaintop, you're certainly not going to bless him when you get in the valley. Mm -mm. If that foundation is not a part of your life, then when the winds and the rains come, you will crumble. But we find that Job was a man who is perfect and upright. Now, I caution you because a lot of people don't understand the Scriptures uh, and we want to apply modern definitions to Bible words. Uh, when the Bible is using perfect, it does not mean sinless. Amen. Job was made out of the same stuff as you and I, flesh and bones. Uh, uh, Job didn't have any special bone. Uh, he didn't have a halo. He didn't have a set of wings. Uh, he didn't have a golden harp. Uh, he was made of the same stuff you and I were. Uh, he just made up his mind he was going to live for God. Uh, can I say that word perfect means to be complete, complete mature, whole. Job just didn't uh, 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 get born again or just become a Christian or just become a follower of God the day before. Uh, Job had been walking God a long time uh, and God had taught Job some things uh, and Job had made up in his heart and in his mind, uh, come what may, he was going to live for God. Uh, Amen. He was perfect. He was mature. Brother Clint, what is a... Uh, uh, a terrible, terrible uh, 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 thing that is a part of our churches today is you got people that have been believers for years, but they're not solid in the faith. They're still, Miss Marcy, on the sincere milk of the word. They've never matured. They've never grown in Jesus. Friend, if you've been saved six months, you ought to know more about Jesus than you did when you got saved. Uh, you've been saved for years. Every year you ought to know, learn more about Jesus. You ought to grow closer to Jesus. Uh, uh, you ought to memorize more about Jesus. Uh, uh, you ought to know more about the Bible about, than, uh, about Jesus. Uh, you ought to read the Bible through. You ought to understand some things about Jesus. Can I say, the only time you'll quit growing is when you shut off your mind. Mm hmm there are some don't come to Sunday school because they think they've learned everything. God's got a way of showing them they don't know much. But he was a perfect man, but he was also an upright man. That word upright means to be straight. His life was straight as an arrow. There was no variance. Anybody that knew Job knew that he, he was a man of God. He loved God. He blessed the Lord. His life was an act of adoration for God long before this day befell him. Can I say his stand is why he could bless the Lord on the most horrific of days. Can I say secondly, not only because of his stand, but because of his submission. Look again at verse number one. That man was perfect and upright and one that feared God. Now again, we want to try modern definitions to Bible words. The word here, fear, does not mean uh, uh, an absolute terror and afraid of God. Although, God is angry with the wicked every day, and it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. But if you're blood washed, robed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, you, you shouldn't be afraid and tremble at God. That's not what that means. Uh, it doesn't mean to be in terror of God. Uh, it means to have the utmost respect for God. Can I say, in fearing God, Job reveals his reverence for God. If you read this chapter, you'll find that it wasn't Satan who came seeking to pick on Job. It was God who brought Job up before Satan. 
You know why? Because God knew what was in Job's life and had watched Job and knew Job's adoration for him and God said, uh, there isn't anything Satan's got in his bag of tricks that's going to hurt that old boy. Hmm? It's because his reverence for God. You know what causes people to come to church when they don't feel 100%? And causes people to read their Bible when there's a dark cloud over their life. Causes people to sing unto the Lord when their heart is breaking. You know what causes that? Their reverence for God. They just love God. Not only shows his reverence for God, but it also shows his reliance on God. When you fear God, you are simply saying, God, I know that everything I have comes from your hand. And I'm just going to rely on you. Hmm? It amazes me how many people rely on how much money they got in the bank. It amazes me how much uh, uh, people rely on God based on their security in life and based on uh, uh, their job and everything going well in their life. And uh, 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 You find a little hiccup in any of that and then people fall apart. I've seen people lose their job and you wouldn't even know but Say, preacher, prove that. Well, Brother Thad was out of work for a long time before you all even knew anything about it. You know why? Because Thad didn't depend on fast line. He's been depending on God for a long time. Uh, Job's adoration shows his reverence of God, his reliance on God, but also his relationship with God. See, his submission showed in who he believed in and who he walked with. It amazes me how people will come to church, but they won't go a little bit farther and submit their lives to God. It'll be a great day in your life when God gets first place in your life and when that song Brother Clint sang becomes real in your life, that you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Can I say, Job was able to bless the Lord on the darkest of days because of his stand. And that stand didn't happen on that day. That stand happened a long time before then. That's why Job was able to worship. Job just did what only Job knew to do. Worship God. Depend on God. Trust in God. He knew God had never failed him before and God wouldn't fail him now. Hmm? He goes on later to say, though he tried me, yet when uh, I come forth, I'll come forth as gold. Or though he slay me, when I come forth, I'll come forth as gold. He was trusting God till the end. Can I say this? He could bless the Lord because of his stand, because of his submission, but also because of his shunning. Look again at verse number one. He said he was perfect and upright. One that feared God and eschewed evil. That word eschewed means to shun, to avoid, to run from, to hate. He avoided evil at all costs. You say, well, that's Old Testament preacher. Give me chapter and verse. I'm glad you ask. The Bible says to abstain from all appearance of evil. Even if it looks bad, you ought to shun it. You ought to avoid it. You ought to run from it. If there's anything that somebody can use in that to to hurt your testimony for Jesus Christ, you don't need it. Say, Brother Doug, what's wrong with it? Well, if you've got to ask, there's probably something wrong with it. Hmm? Job, you remember what I said? His life was straight as an arrow because he shunned, he eschewed evil. He did everything he could to avoid it. If he saw evil on, on the, down the street, he crossed over and went on the other side of the street. Hmm? Need to avoid evil. Can I say, every person that's ever fell and failed the grace of God, it's because when evil presented itself, they didn't avoid it. They all knew better. But all of a sudden, there it was. And rather than shun it, avoid it, they fell to it. And Job was able to bless the Lord. His life was an act of adoration to God because of his stand, because of his submission, because of his shunning. But not only that, but because of his sacrificing. 
You see, Job was able to fall down and worship that day because of all the worship he'd done prior to that. Hmm? It amazes me. I don't know if you've seen this. I've seen this. Folks will just hit and miss or get out of church altogether, and then something bad happens, and they run to the church house, want to sit on the front row. They want their prayer request to be heard above everybody else's prayer request. They want God to fix it, and if God don't fix it that day, they're gone again. You know what those are? Those are yo-yo Christians. Satan's got them by a string and they're up and they're down and they're up and they're down and they're up and they're down and they're up and they're down. They have no stability in their life. That's not Job. Job's solid. Job has a foundation. Job has anchored himself into the things of God and when the winds of adversity hit him like a ton of bricks, he still stands, friends. It all began from his sacrificing. He just didn't worship that day, Brother Brian. Look at verse 5 of chapter number 1. The Bible says, And it was so, speaking of his children, who were having a feast at one of the sons' house, says, And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Uh, for Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Uh, thus did Job continually. Now I don't know what the proper sacrifice was for sanctifying one of your children on any given day. But if it was one bullock and two turtle doves, Brother Tommy, Brother Charlie, that was 14 trips to an altar for one. Now, to sanctify them, it may have been two or three bullocks. Or it might have been a bullock and a lamb. It might have been a bullock and a lamb and five turtle doves. I don't know. But he went to the altar at least 14 times for one child, and there was 10 of them there. Figured out. That was 140 trips to the altar. Mm. He knew a little bit about sacrificing. Knew a little bit about worship. Because you see, Old Testament sacrifice, uh, here's what would take place, Brother uh, uh, Donald. Uh, uh, he'd have to take the animal. He'd have to slay the animal. He'd have to collect the blood from the animal. He'd have to uh, uh, slay the animal and divide it into pieces. Uh, he'd have to put the pieces on the burnt offering and offer them up to God. Uh, then he'd have to make certain, uh, as the fat become to, uh, uh, fresh to the meat, uh, that it would begin to slide, that it wouldn't slide off the altar. Because if it slid off the altar, the sacrifice sacrifice was no count. Uh, it was defiled. He'd have to start over. Uh, so after he got the meat on the altar, uh, he'd have to keep it fresh on the altar and keep it from uh, uh, sli uh, sliding uh, and uh, uh, wait till it was ashes. Uh, then he'd have to put the ashes in an ash pile. Uh, and then he'd have to uh, take the blood and offer it. Uh, and there was so much in the sacrifice. Uh, it wasn't just rush in, uh, sing a couple hymns, uh, uh, put an offering in a plate uh, and go to the house. Uh, uh, he was was there uh, all day uh, offering up sacrifice uh, keeping his sacrifice holy and pure before God uh, hey, uh, and Miss Barb uh, while he's there uh, he might have just said boy God is good uh, and broke into singing God is so good God is so good I mean he was there on the altar uh, blessing the Lord uh, offering up sacrifice uh, and God got glory for from that uh, at least 140 times he went to the altar maybe many more than that and here he is sacrificing unto God just for perhaps brother Josh one of his children might have sinned against God just in case we're going to erase any of that I'm going to sacrifice and make sure God is pleased with my children hmm? can I say this in sacrificing, he frequently visited the altar. Frequently. Again, at least 140 times in that one day. Can I say this? While he was offering up sacrifice, he was fervent in prayer. He's uh, asking God to, uh, uh, God to be blessed, and he's talking to God, and he's asking God to uh, uh, receive a sacrifice. But can I say this? Job was faithful not only not to allow his sacrifice to become defiled, but look what it said at the end of verse 5. Thus did Job occasionally. Is that what it says? 
Only on Sunday morning. Continually. Every day. Every day. Every day. You know why Job was the wealthiest man in the East? Read there in that first few verses. You'll find out why. Because Job offered up a whole lot of animals to God. Hmm. Uh, can I say, the way to be prosperous and increase in God's economy starts at the altar. The more you're at the altar, the more blessed you'll be of God, I promise you. Huh? Can I say he was able to worship when everything fell apart because he had been worshiping long before that. Now, I don't have time to get into this. Who haven't I picked on? Brother Eddie, I haven't got time to pick on it. Bring all this out. But in chapter 1, after he worships, chapter 2, you find him going back to the altar. But Brother James, he's lost all of his flocks. He doesn't have, Brother Tommy, anything else to sacrifice. Brother Zach, you find in chapter 2, he doesn't even have enough to even get a flame going. So he goes and he sits in the ash pile. And he offers up, Brother Phil, the only thing he's got left, himself. And he's in the ash pile. And his boils are from head to toe. Uh, and he takes a pot here and he finds there and he begins to scrape the boils off. Uh, uh, there's a pottery fragment in the ash pile because that was some things that were of no use. Uh, but why does he sit out in the ash pile uh, in hopes that God remembers all them sacrifices uh, that came from them uh, ashes? Uh, and he sits down amongst them, said, God, uh, this is all I got left, uh, but all that I have is yours. That's how he could worship. How could he do it? Because of his stand. Because of his submission. Because of his shunning. Because of his sacrificing. But I'll tell you how Job could worship and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because of his source. Look at verse number 9. Verse number 9, the Bible says, well, let's look at verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there's none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man? It's one thing if you say you're perfect. It's another thing if God says you are. A perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Now look at verse 9. Then Satan answered. This was the devil's reply to God. Then, then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Now look at verse 10. Has not, what's that word there? Thou. Who's he talking to? Satan's talking to the Lord. Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands uh, and his substance is in, in, increased in the land. Uh, two times uh, Satan uh, in, uh, reveals the source behind Job. Uh, he says, hast thou? And then he says, thou uh, uh, are the source uh, behind Job. Uh, and Job's source that caused him to live in adoration of God uh, was God himself. Uh, even Satan recognized uh, who'd blessed Job so good. Uh, who'd been so good to Job. Uh, it was the Lord. Uh, hey, the indictment was Satan. Uh, he couldn't find any wrong with Job because he said, it's all your fault. Uh, you did this. Uh, hey, uh, when Satan comes uh, uh, before the throne uh, and he says, uh, Lord says, has thou considered clean how? Uh, he said, you've been good to him. Uh, you saved him. Uh, you washed him. I can't get to him. He belongs to you. He looks at Noreen and says, You've been good to her, God. You saved her. You sealed her. I can't get to her. Okay, well, what happened to that Brian guy? You saved him. You sealed him. Hey, the source is the Lord. Hey, when God's been good to you, 
even when the bottom falls out, uh, you can still say, blessed be the Lord, because uh, I'm still washed, uh, I'm still saved, uh, I'm still secure, uh, I'm still going to heaven, uh, blessed be the Lord. Uh, the source was the Lord. Job depended on God for his security. Job depended on God for his supply. Job depended on God for his strength. And that's why Job could say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now my question to you tonight, what's your life suggest about God? Does your life shine as an act of adoration for the source that you claim you know the Lord Jesus Christ if the Lord has been good to you your life ought to be straight if the Lord's been good to you your life ought to run from evil if the Lord has been good for you you ought to be anchored into the word of God and the things of God if the Lord's been good to you, my dear friends, everything about you ought to say, not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Amen. Now, you've had a bad week. Sorry, happens. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Had a bad month, I'm sorry. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Can I say, if He truly is your source, everything around us are just irritants because what is within us is a fountain that bubbles over and helps us when trouble comes. Now listen, friend, there are some days that are much darker than others but he is still worthy of our praise because without him oh how treacherous the day would really be I wonder when's the last time you blessed him not with your lips with your life and if you truly bless him with your life then when tragedy comes you'll bless him with your lips I wonder how's your life before God even tonight. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. While they get the song, let's pray. Father, the only words that come to heart is blessed be the name of the Lord. God, help our lives to reveal the greatness of God in our life. God, when dark days come, help our lips reveal the true source of our life. God, when Satan begins to afflict, help us to run to Thee and bless You and bruise Him. Now, God, You know the heart of everyone here tonight. Maybe some facing some very dark things. God, help them in the midst of their darkness to find the light and the love of Jesus that they too might be able to proclaim, Blessed be the name of the Lord. God, help us all to be anchored into your truths. Help us to frequent the things of God that when dark days do come, we don't have to find you, we'll already be with you. Now, God, bless in this invitation. God, if there's somebody here tonight unsaved, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. And again, Lord, we said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Have your will and way. Speak to hearts. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.